coming up on today's Airborne, set a world record and lose your insurance. Meet the Bell 412 EPI, and Sikorsky makes a milestone deal. I'm Ashley Hale, welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. Well, as we were wrapping up today's episode of Airborne, our newsroom got a late-breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to tell you all about it. Thanks, Ashley. And hi, folks. We're going to dispense with barnstorming this week simply because we're running out of room and we've got breaking news for you. To make an exceedingly long story short, today the NTSB has released an interim factual report along with nearly 500 pages of related documents and its ongoing investigation of the Japan Airlines 787 battery fire in Boston some weeks ago. Additionally, NTSB Chairman Deborah Herzman has announced that the NTSB will be holding both a forum and a hearing in April to provide additional information to advance the investigation. Quote, with the grounding of the 787 fleet, concurrent international incident investigations, redesign and recertification activities taking place simultaneously, it is essential to provide the aviation community, policymakers, and the public with the factual information we are developing, said Herzman. She added that releasing an interim report provides a window into the significant investigative work that has been accomplished so far. The forum will be held in mid-April and will explore lithium-ion battery technology and transportation safety. The investigative hearing to be held later in April will focus on the design and certification of the 787 battery system. Quote, the information developed through the upcoming forum and the hearing will help the NTSB and the entire transportation community better understand the risks and benefits associated with lithium batteries and illuminate how manufacturers and regulators evaluate the safety of this new technology. The 48-page interim factual report summarizes the NTSB's initial findings on the JAL battery fire investigation and includes details on how the maintenance personnel discovered the fire and how the firefighters responded and extinguished it, findings from the examination of the battery and test results of related components, initial reports on the flight recorder data, a description of the 787 electrical power system certification plan, and a list of ongoing and planned investigative activities. In other words, not a whole lot is known yet. Investigation ongoing. More news to follow. For the Aero News Network, Airborne, and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Well, on Tuesday, we reported the story of a retired American captain, Bill Harrelson, and his plans for a circumpolar flight in his home-built Lance Air 4. To test the aircraft, he set out on a 7,000-mile test flight from Guam to Jacksonville, Florida. And it appears he succeeded in setting a new world record for single-engine land distance in his weight class. Harrelson reports that, quote, the flight was extremely challenging, but went well. Although not official yet, it looks like a new world record for distance has been set. The current record set by Peter Wilkins of Australia was from Sydney to Phoenix in a Piper Malibu Mirage. His distance was 6,890 nautical miles. That record has stood for 26 years. In order to gain the record, I had to further his distance by at least 1% which would be 6,958 nautical miles. My distance was 7,051 nautical miles, 93 nautical miles over the minimum." End quote. Unfortunately, instead of a letter of congratulations from his insurer, Aerospace Insurance Managers, Harrelson received notification on Tuesday that his policies were to be terminated, even though he was aware that the record flight he had made a few days prior was outside of the policy's limits and that he did not expect coverage for the flight. Harrelson's agent, Falcon Insurance, did their best, but aerospace insurance managers apparently failed to budge, and they decided to kick not just his new Lance Air 4 to the curb, but also a previously built and well-traveled Lance Air 320. Apparently, Harrelson sees the issue as a disappointment, to be sure, but no reason to cancel his plans for the Circumpolar Expedition. Well, much of this week was dedicated to helicopter news as the 2013 Heli Expo took place in Las Vegas, Nevada, and an upgrade to one of Bell Helicopters' best-known aircraft has been unveiled, the new Bell 412 EPI. 
The company says the upgrade improves the Bell 412 EP's platform with the Bell Basics Pro fully integrated glass flight deck, which provides critical flight information at a glance for greater situational awareness and safety. The new Bell 412 EPI also incorporates the power of Pratt & Whitney's PT-60 9 Twin Pack engines, and it offers a rugged airframe built with safety in mind. The Bell 412 EPI is a workhorse for everything from law enforcement to oil and gas transport, and it's ideal for any mission requiring power and performance. The new Bell 412 EPI is on display at Bell Helicopters booth at Heli Expo this week. Sikorsky inked agreements for 30 aircraft with Milestone Aviation Group and 26 to be delivered to the Bristow Group. Milestone, which leases aircraft to helicopter operators worldwide, agreed to purchase 23 S-92 and 7 S-76D aircraft, with options to buy more of both models. Founded in 2010, Milestone has more than 79 helicopters leased to date. Meanwhile, the Bristow Group, which supplies aircraft to the offshore oil and natural gas industry, entered into an agreement with Sikorsky for 10 S-76 D helicopters, with options for another 16 to perform the offshore oil transport mission. Sikorsky expects to begin deliveries to both companies this year, with Milestone's deliveries continuing through 2017. Pipistrol and Dynon are joining forces to provide pilots with easy-to-fly, fuel-efficient, and high-performing aircraft that have advanced pilot-friendly avionics. For the 2013 season, the Cinus, the Virus, and the Virus SW lineup now feature Dynon Avionics D-Series instruments as standard equipment. To complement the pilot experience, Pipistrol is offering the newly designed extra-large instrument panel on these airplanes as an option. For the flagship Virus SW100, equipped with the Rotax 912 IS engine, Pipistrol selected the Skyview system as standard. All Cinus, Virus, and Virus SW aircraft, including LSA and kit aircrafts, can be further upgraded to top-of-the-line dual-redundant 7-inch or 10-inch Skyview displays with autopilot, transponder, and ADS-B options. The first production, New Citation Sovereign, rolled off Cessna's production line in the company's Wichita, Kansas manufacturing facility on Monday. The new Citation Sovereign is one of the six new Cessna aircraft expected to hit the market this year. The newest Citation will have a range of 3,000 nautical miles. It features improved cabin cooling, Garmin G5000 avionics with auto throttles, and a new cabin management system. Winglets have been added to the new Sovereign, contributing to the increased range and enabling a direct climb to 45,000 feet. The aircraft was announced at the National Business Aircraft Association trade show in Orlando five months ago. You're watching Airborne. More in just a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Garmin is introducing new features and capabilities of the GTN series touchscreen GPS Navcom. 
that address the specific needs of helicopter operations. For helicopters, the GTN series will now incorporate three helicopter-specific databases, including an obstacle database that adds nearly 30,000 additional low-altitude obstacles. Built-in Helitas is optionally available to provide operators with visual and audible alerts of potential terrain and obstacle conflicts along the flight path. Optional night vision toggle capability is also available. The helicopter-specific optimizations for the GTN series have received the FAA's Technical Standard Order authorization, and deliveries are expected to begin later this month, starting at $10,935. Rolls-Royce has launched the latest variant of its M250 engine, the M250 C47E. The company has secured a commercial launch commitment for one new and two current aircraft applications, with a customer announcement expected at Heli Expo. The U.S. Navy is committed as the first military customer to incorporate the M250 C47E into the Northrop Grumman MQ-8C Fire Scout. The new M250 C47E improves efficiency and performance, including a 5% improvement in hot and high power and a nearly 8% increase in rated takeoff power. Rolls-Royce has delivered more than 31,000 M250 engines, with the fleet totaling over 223 million flight hours. In its 15th turbine-powered Civil Helicopter Purchase Outlook report, Honeywell expects that global deliveries of new civilian use helicopters will increase over the five-year period of 2013 to 2017. The forecast shows improved purchase plans for new helicopters in every region of the world. North American buying plans increased for the first time in half a decade. Based on the survey results, delivery rates of new helicopters over the next three years are expected to reach 1,000 new units each year. Driving the new purchase expectations were aircraft age and condition, contractual requirements, change in operational requirements, expiring warranties, and regulations requiring twin engines. The time between overhaul for all new PW206 and PW207 engines have been extended to 4,000 hours. The TBO extension is applicable to all new PW206 and PW207 engines. It's also available to engines currently in service that meet specifications as outlined in Service Information Letter number PW200045. The PW200 family of engines has logged more than 6 million flight hours. The Bell Model 47 will be returning to the market as a new turbine-powered helicopter with the Rolls-Royce RR300 engine. The announcement was made Tuesday by Scott's Bell 47 at Heli Expo in Las Vegas. The model will be named the 47 GT6. Don McGuire, SB47's Director of Customer Support and Services and a former Bell 47 mechanic and pilot himself, said that the 47 GT6 will be based upon the 47 G3B2A type design, modified by STC to incorporate the RR300 engine. The STC will also include a new modern instrument panel, similar to that currently being developed by the SB47, for use on the piston-driven fleet of Bell 47 helicopters still in service. It has composite main rotor blades, LED exterior lighting, and new interiors. Plus, SB47 hopes to drive down operating costs to market-leading numbers through the use of modern drivetrain technologies. Mr. McGuire said they expect to start deliveries in 2016. Finally, today on Airborne, this year in October, Albuquerque will celebrate its 42nd annual Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, the world's largest continuous balloon festival. The nine-day event draws 750 hot air balloons from around the world, almost a million spectators, and it contributes millions each year to the city's economy. So if you heard that balloons were illegal in Albuquerque, you'd think that that was a joke, right? 
Well, that's what members of the city council thought until it came to light that ballooning is not specifically mentioned in the city's zoning codes. And anything not included is, well, excluded and illegal. KRQE-TV reports that the problem arose when one local homeowner began to complain about the balloons, and he eventually took his complaint to the zoning department. Earlier this week, the city council revised the zoning code to make ballooning legal in the ballooning capital of the world. Now, the new code doesn't really change much, but at least people can't complain that balloons don't belong because the city isn't zoned for it. Every area of the city is now zoned for balloon takeoff and landings. However, that doesn't mean pilots can launch from a landowner's property without permission, and there are already noise, nuisance, and trespassing laws on the books, and they apply to balloons right along with everything and everyone else. The 42nd Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta launches October 5th through the 13th, 2013. Well, that's our program for Friday, March 8th. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And please remember that Airborne is now streamed twice weekly and is always online. Please join us again next Tuesday for another edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.